Hi, this is Gershon Wolf and welcome to Modern Music Composition. So in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about intervals. We're kind of getting back to talking about uh, tonal structure. The last couple of videos, I've talked about uh, set theory a little bit and actually even in today's video, I'm going to touch on some aspects of set theory and some properties of set theory in terms of intervals. So the interval is just an association of any two tones. And so let's just get right into it. Um, I've laid it out like this for a reason, and you'll see why. Because in set theory, um, we talk about the interval class vector. Every set class has an interval class vector. And what that is, is it comprises of six pieces, minor second, major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, and the tritone. What it is, is it's a compilation of intervals associated with its particular set class. So as we learned in the previous video, you have a set class and actually each set class is made up of pitch classes. Now I haven't mentioned pitch classes before, this is the first time. A pitch class is just a tone. You've got the C pitch class, the D pitch class, the E pitch class. They're just series of tones. They're, they're just tones. Um, but what the interval class vector shows you is it, it actually has a, a, a couple interesting properties. One, it again will tell you what that piece of music, well, what that, any, any um, series of tones in a set class, it will tell you what that is going to sound like on average. It will also tell you under um, transposition, what notes survive under transposition. We'll, we'll go into this in, the, in, in some future videos, but I just want to bring it up because I keep bringing up set class theory in all these videos. So let's just get into the intervals. Um, over here, I actually have the ratios. You've seen these before in, in previous videos. Um, what these are, are these are the mathematical ratios associated with that particular interval. And you now understand that the smaller the ratio, the more consonant that interval is going to sound. The larger the ratio and the larger the numbers become in the ratio, the more dissonant it's going to sound. So let's just go through it. Um, a minor second has a ratio of 15 over 16. How do you get that ratio? Quickly, I'll review. Um, in this example, while well, a minor second has one semitone, uh, an example would be from uh, C to C sharp. So C has a, a middle C has a frequency of 261 hertz, and I think C sharp has a frequency of 277 hertz. Um, if you take 277, divide it by 261, you're going to get 1.06, and if you take 16 divided by 15, you'll get 1.06. That's where these ratios come from. It's that simple. Um, <clears throat> moving on, we have the major second. Its ratio is 8-9. It has associated with the interval two semitones. So an example of that would be between C and D. Um, oh, I should explain this column too. This is the inversion column. I talk about a minor second, but its inversion is a major seventh. Okay, and actually to explain that, I've written down our chromatic scale in circular form, in clock form. And so if I have just one semitone here, I invert this. Once again, I flip it 180 degrees along the C F sharp axis, and I get 11. Well, a major seventh is 11 semitones. So that's how it's related with respect to inversion. A major second, once again, I mentioned it has two semitones. Its inversion is a minor seventh. If I go two semitones over here to D, I invert this, I get 10 semitones. That's a, a minor seventh. That's actually why the interval class vector only has six inputs, because that's all you need to calculate all these inversions. Tritone special, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, a minor third has a ratio of five to six. It's three semitones. Its inversion is a major sixth. And a good example of that would be C to D sharp. It's consonant. So the first two are dissonant. A minor third 
is consonant. We'll go to now to a major third. Its ratio is four to five. It is four semitones in the interval, and it would be like C to E. That would be the beginning of building up a C major uh, triad. Just like what I've got here. We'll get to this in a minute. Um, next is a perfect fourth. That has five semitones, and um, that's actually like going counterclockwise on the circle of fifths. Um, what's our example here? That would be C to F. We're going counterclockwise um, C to F on the circle of fifths. That is also consonant. The tritone has quite an interesting ratio. It's 32 to 45, and it's definitely going to be dissonant. And obviously, a good example would be C to F sharp. Now, the tritone's inversion, it inverts onto itself. And so, um, it doesn't have any, it, it, as you can see here, if the axis is through C and F sharp, and I fold it this way, 180 degrees, I still have C, F sharp. So it inverts onto itself. I just want to talk briefly now about, about some chords, uh, and in particular the major triad. So to build up a major triad, we take C to E, which is four semitones, and then E to G, which is three. So a major triad is always a four, three. A minor triad is always a three, four. Well, um, with respect to set theory, both the major triad and the minor triad fit into set 311, and that's tones 0, 3, and 7. And actually, I'll spend a video um, explaining this to you and showing exactly how both the major and the minor triads fit into 311. Just like the major and minor scales, the major diatonic scale and the minor di diatonic scale fit into set class 735, well, just so, um, the major triads and the minor triads both fit into set class 311. So, that's it for this video. Um, pretty short, talking about intervals. And um, the next video, I think I'm going to get involved into talking about, once again, set theory and explaining this um, set class 311. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.